Are you standing right behind me? I can see that you're standing behind me. I'm gonna be here all night. Would you like to follow me around? Tonight we venture deeper into Biddeford's old textile mill, seeking out echoes of its former inhabitants. Join us for this exciting conclusion. Welcome to Haunt Me. I'll come back and visit you soon, I promise, okay? Have a good break in the smoke. Yeah. Oh, I just went through me. Oh, Jesus, it's still coming. Go get them. So he's right here. Yeah, I know, he came out the door. <laughs> 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 you, you can stay. K2 meter kept going off um, when Ash would turn around and walk a few paces back. So is this the entity was following us back to 13? You can't follow me home. You can't follow Ash home either. He came out the door. Can you go test again? I can feel him behind you, Ash. Hey, where are you? I was not a fan of it following us, um, so I kind of tried to take a dominant position in the group. Is there anything next to me, anything? I can't feel it. Okay. If you are here, I please, please don't follow me, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. Tell them I go on a date. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Why is it still going? Scan me again. Oh, jeez, Ty. <sighs> Well, you ever would be for your Let's back home. away from here. So nothing can come with us tonight. Everything that's in this mill has to stay in this mill. Understood? left off, the Haunt Me team was deep in the heart of the Biddeford Mill, an old textile mill in southern Maine that is believed to have a great number of ghosts in its many buildings. We went into this investigation with caution because in such a large area with the possibility of so many spirits, you never know what you're going to find or how the spirits will react to your presence. At the end of the last episode, Ty and Carol had a conversation with a spirit entirely on a K2 meter, one of the best scientific tools that we have at our disposal. In a room that served as a break room or smoking room for mill workers, a spirit took an immense liking to me, following me around and only answering questions that I would ask. As our night in the mill continues, we will see that there are many, many spirits in this complex just dying to talk to us. Not me. Well, that's just Pike's when I go away. Are you near us right now? Oh, I have such a bad headache. Whoa, whoa. You got red? Dr. Red, once again, this thing's going insane over here. Oh, it's right where I got a headache really bad. It was just Dr. Red. Evidence doesn't just happen when you're trying to find it. It's the room upstairs. It's gonna be a human. We heard footsteps um, on the, the room above us. Fortunately, we were the only ones in this building besides our cameraman. So I think either Ash or I said something along the lines of, okay, that's too legitimate not to be a person. There's gotta be someone up there. So we said, if that is you, could you make something else happen? So you walking around up there? Keep walking. We need you to give us a sign that that's you. What the f was that? What is that? 
face here laughing? You think this is funny? Mark 37 minutes on this date. We heard something that, with our own ears at that time, that sounded like giggling. There was complete audible giggling and it was horrifying. Keep it coming. The reason we keep asking you to make noise is because some people believe that you're not really here. But we do. So we just need some proof to the other people that you're still here and you're still in this mill and you still care about it. That's all we need. Working in the mill wasn't just a job. It was really a way of life. And that's still in existence here because a lot of those people still live in this town. In order to understand some of the happenings in the mill, it's important to consider its history. Carolyn Gosselin, the school teacher who is in charge of preserving the mill through its museum and through the guided tours she gives alongside her students, has a vast array of knowledge about the haunted complex. Now we will consider the mill's history, and perhaps we can learn more about the buildings we're exploring and the spirits who we're communicating with. The Bedford Mills definitely have a lot of history. And with a lot of history, they had a lot of people working here with their own lives and their own stories that really made this place what it was. My name is Victoria Ian, and I am on the board of directors for the Biddeford Mills Museum, as well as the youth liaison between the museum and the high school. The majority of the workforce were French speaking. A lot of them moved down from their farms to be able to work in a place where they would get a paycheck at the end of the week. A lot of women came here early on in the late 1800s to work for a dowry, to be able to gain a little bit of money to go back home and get a better husband. The mills started to decline after the advent of electricity because it was easier to build mills in the south next to the cotton plantations and run them out of there than it was to ship cotton north. Back in 2009, the parent company Sunbeam actually sold the company overseas to China. One day people showed up and the doors were closed type of idea. I think the, the spirits that are still here are very cautious to see what happens to these spaces and they want things to remain the same. So to have all of this commotion and people coming through and talking and laughing and I just want to articulate aloud that what's happening is good, that it doesn't have to mean everything's changing and that the past is being erased. It's more like the past is being connected more solidly with the, the present and the future. Because people pour their lives into this place, there is a definite reason behind why there would be paranormal activity here. The lagoon is an underground area that used to be used to channel water into the mill to help power it. I feel like you're more comfortable without all the flashing lights. That's okay, because we are too. It's a big, wide area with tunnels on either side, catwalks um, up in the air on each wall, but there is a wooden catwalk that goes down into the tunnels, which allows you to venture in there, should you wish. Where is that shuffle? I don't know. It's in the back left corner, right? Ahead of us? Yeah. I thought you just walked past me. I thought you walked past me. Okay. No, I literally saw a shadow up yeah, ahead. No, oh yeah, she's following us because of this thing is this thing keeps going red. I pulled out to the K2 meter, immediately noticed it spiking. It was spiking red pretty much the whole time, right around where I was standing. Maybe she's behind you. I think she's right next to me. Yeah, yeah I think she, she likes Sean a lot. <laughs> so I decided to hand the, the K2 off to um, one of the girls I was with, uh, Caitlin and Katie. Nothing happens, it's dead. She hands it back to me and immediately read again to the right of me. Spikes, red. What's this file? That's totally awesome. I'm glad that you're here with us. Hello, you have a girlfriend? Come on, Sean. Come on. Good one, Sean. Gone oh my god, she's gone! <laughs> you can come back. I don't want you following me home, I have a girlfriend. She might not like that. She might not be okay with that. Boom. To green, and we never saw her again. <laughs> the smoking room's right over here. Our cameraman, me and Ashley, were in the smoking room. And what happened? Just 
had a really intense KT session. In with there? A, yeah, with a ghost that really liked me. Hey, we're back. Got to go. Ugh, smoky smoker did. I brought my friend Carol. Hi. So much yelling in. Is it staying steady? Is there anything no. in here giving that off? It's not staying steady. We just did it. Where did you guys see the shadow? Ty said you guys saw shadows. Uh, shadows, they were up on 13, like, oh. Was that you, Charlie? No, it's not. I didn't touch it. Holy oh, crap. Was that you? Him and I were back to a board, and you could hear it slide and then fall and slam on the ground. I looked over at him thinking he did it, he was looking at me thinking I did it, and we both realized that no one had pushed the board over. Charlie, I never wanted to hug you so bad. <laughs> Are you upset that we're here? I told you I'd come back and visit you. This time I brought a friend. Say you later on my K2. You give it up to Red? Put it up to Red if he wants to stay. Oh, I'm really impressed by the board. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Do you wanna? We're gonna leave now. Thank you. Thank you for visiting with us. Mill 36 is an eight-story building that they used to use to store cotton in. It's super spooky within itself because it goes on for so long. The ceilings are very low, and there are glass windows that are very loose, and so they rattle frequently. There's a really heavy, disturbing feeling throughout that building. Do you feel stuck in here? You can come over here. Do you like to color? Because I have this sh machine. Oh. oh, whoa, shadows. Oh, uh, Sean? Um, it's Sean. 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 Sean, Sean, can we can see. Oh, oh Sean. Don't worry, it's okay. You can come over. She said, Do you like to color? And the thing started going off behind <laughs> you, Sean. Do you like orange? I'm wearing an orange hat right now. There it is. There's orange. Yeah, there you oh, go. Red. Do you like red? There were quite a few shadow figures moving that multiple people saw. There were a lot of voices that multiple people heard at the same time. Katie, what is over there with you? I don't know. If whoever's over by Katie, can you say your name? I did too. Yeah, too. I thought it was one of these guys when I saw you guys look. Yeah. Are you alone here? Yeah, uh, just two friends. I know, I keep thinking. Smoking man? It looks like smoking. Yeah, I think it's touching my back. Look, really? Yeah. Someone's touching Caitlin's back and legs. It felt like something touched my back very lightly. Like someone had lined up their fingers and pushed it against my left shoulder blade. Very, very slowly moved it to my right shoulder blade and then moved it back and left it there. He is smoking, man. Because remember, he was smoking. Did you guys just hear the thumbs up? Yeah. Quiet over here. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. But there's smoke above us. Give me your name and we'll leave. against a pole and I wanted to be a jerk so I kind of said why don't you knock over this broom it's a ghost thing to do or something like that. I got about four feet away from the pillar and slam and we both turn around and we're like 
did that just happen? I got a red light you can talk into and I'll be able to... Okay, so the broom just fell over. What time is it? Uh, time. I'm 45 minutes into my EVP right now. believe how awesome the mills were. So yeah. great. Yes, yeah. I feel really lucky that we've even had the chance to go there, um, especially Building 16, which is going to be torn down soon. Right, I mean, those buildings are such a historical part of Maine that it was definitely one of the highlights of Mingo's hunting career to get to go there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So uh, what were your favorite parts? I don't even know where to begin with that one. Yeah, the mill was intense and really active. Well, what about that broom that tipped over? I mean, that was unbelievable. That was right behind me, and it fell over when you said something like, that'd be a ghostly thing to do. Yeah. Our cameraman's face was priceless. <laughs> and um, there was that block of wood that fell over when Ash and I were in the smoking room. And neither one of us were near it. No. The smoking room must have been a favorite spot for the mill workers to hang out because there was a lot of activity there. I had a conversation with something with the K2 activity to back it up, and then it even followed us out. Oh, well, yeah, it followed you out. Whatever it was, like you and not me. <laughs> Speaking of ghosts liking us, there was that one spirit in the women's section of the mill that just kept following me up for a while. And the K2 right there the whole time, it was just going yeah. off. Until yeah, until you said you had a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, just lost it, just disappeared, so. Yeah. Not like Good to know if you ever need a confidence boost, we can go back to the mill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then later on in the night, we heard some girl laughing coming yeah. from the ball. Yeah, we actually have that queued up if we yeah. want. So we got it? want to listen to it. Oh, oh, see, it's yeah. quiet. Yeah, yeah, you can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. There were a lot of weird noises in the mill. When I was alone on the stairways, I heard footsteps, and there was nobody even near me. Yeah. About that EVP session in the cotton storage building, that place was so creepy. Yeah. It was yeah. so yeah. creepy. It didn't help that all the windows in it were loose and rattled. Oh, right. yeah. It was like a horror movie. Okay, so we originally gave this place a five after hearing the interviews. Um, I personally think it would be a little bit higher after our evidence. Yeah, stuff yeah. fell over and we got a lot of evidence on our recorders and the cameras. Yeah, sure. that and the K2 evidence that we got kind of made it seem like whatever was there was aware of us too. And so that made it seem more of an intelligent haunt than a residual one. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I would say it's about a seven from all the evidence we gathered. Yeah. I'd say that sounds right. The mill is an especially active haunt and we have enough evidence to affirm this. From our evidence, we give the mill a 7. Averaging that score with the pre-rate score of 5 gives the Biddeford Mills a final score of 6. That would make this an angiant level haunt, meaning the spirits here are aware and intelligent. I'm extremely impressed with our team. In addition to tackling a place as huge and daunting as the mill, we proved that we could handle a place with active intelligent spirits. We all feel lucky to have gone to the mill. Growing up in Maine, our whole team has heard of the Biddeford Mill, so getting to explore inside of it is a bit of a dream come true for us, since it's such a historical part of our state. We acquired evidence and proved that we could handle a place of this caliber. Going forward, I know that we'll visit scarier places, but I know that with the knowledge we have and the bonds we've made, I feel certain that Haunt Me can handle just about anything.